But as you can see, it's not a few handheld companies that you've perhaps heard of. It's not just Virgin, it's not just SpaceX. There are at least 100 companies out there that are considered in some way, shape, or form uh, looking at space and as a different model, a business model than a traditional uh, space of subcontract, which we might say a space shuttle or UL at. So, how well does the Space Frontier Foundation help the new space, and how can we get involved? Well, we have our annual new space conference. Uh, as I said, the foundation's been around for 22 years. For since 2006, we changed our annual annual conference to the new space conference. And uh, actually, the one of the chairs of the new space conference is here. I can see Ryan in the crowd, but uh, James, stand up. If you are interested in volunteering, come to this guy after the talk. Uh, this year we will be at NASA Ames, California, on site, uh, July 28th and 31st. So, you know, this conference is the premier place to go if you're, you know, a new space company, startup looking to perhaps get more involved with the government or uh, meet potential new investors. So, I hope you can make it. Uh, the foundation does some, have some great meals for students. Uh, we provide both your uh, food and your stay. All you have to do is get yourself there, and if you make your way up to a management level, there are other perks as well. I think it's a unique mix because it's a $600 plus conference that um, most students can't afford to get into, but the foundation makes it happen. So. We have our business plan competition, $5,000 competition partner with the Highland Trust. Uh, this year, it's, it's going to be going on once again. Uh, we're also starting a new project with SEDS uh, to have a theater competition where there will be $1,000 prize starting potentially at the next SEDS conference and then leading into feeding into the 2012 New Space Business Plan competition. Uh, this will enable the, the winner to be one of the finalists at the professional newspaper conference, conference. So, if you're interested, uh, Sarah, if you don't mind standing up right now, she's in point of contact. We haven't designated a manager from the said side yet, but she would be the person to talk to. What else? Teachers in Space. The Foundation aims to send hundreds, perhaps even thousands of teachers into space within the next decade. Uh, we already have five suborbital flights donated, um, Armadillo, Xcore, and a number of other companies. Um, as of now, we selected our first seven finalists, and we have a $400,000 grant from NASA to send these seven finalists uh, to NASCAR training and uh, zero-G flights just to initially give them some training. And hopefully once the suborbital space planes start flying, we'll be able to send them. Space Ventures. This is a project that's been going on since 2008. We partnered with Yuri's Night, the New York Yuri's Night, and we also partnered with the Explorers Club and uh, TEDx to have live streaming events uh, monthly. Two months ago we had Anusha Ansari and Lori Barber. Last month we had our founder Rick Tomlinson and Spacework Commercial with Lisa Perenia, and we're talking number of uh, speakers to start once again in January. So if you are in the New York area especially, uh, come talk to me afterwards and I'd like to make sure we get your hand. It is a uh, relatively cheap event to attend $25 and one of our uh, outreach initiatives. We're also going to be live streaming on Space Digcast, so if you can't make it to New York, you still can be part of the discussion. New Space News. Uh, New Space News, we've been distributing for at least five years now. Um, it's a monthly newsletter for those that really can't spend more than five, ten minutes keeping up with the space field. Um, Entrepreneurial Space Field lists the top 10, 15 stories, short description, quick and to the point. Uh, you can subscribe on our website. So go to uh, www.spacefrontier.org and uh, 
spatial power foundation has had a spatial power program since 1999. We have done a study for NASA. Um, we also did a $200,000 study on that in NASA, just evaluating the technology readiness of space solar power back in the late 90s. We also uh, did, we participated with the National Space Society and a few other nonprofits working with a phase zero for a phase zero NSSO, National Space Security Office, study on the readiness of space solar power just about a year and a half ago. And um, hopefully that will, will lead to uh, more realistic demonstrations of what space solar power can do today and how it can be financially viable. We're not saying that it's going to you know, solve our energy needs now, but, but at least the latest study evaluated and said, well, you can make money many other ways from space solar power, not just competing with ground based uh, sources of energy, but uh, perhaps through d direct beams of energy to a military base or disaster zones. There is potential there that you, know, you can charge, you can consider a seen rate for energy anywhere else and still provide a service that uh, cannot be duplicated and uh, is financially viable to, to make possible. Space farming. And um, in the 90s and the early 2000s, the foundation had a periodical, much like the National Space Society's Ad Astra and what is now the SEDS NOVA. And we resurrected this in a blog that our leaders post to with uh, policy updates and their thoughts on, on the space frontier. So you can also view Space Front on our website. Cosmos Review. If you're interested in poetry, uh, the foundation is not just about um, you know, the realities of making space actually viable, but also the cultural implications of what more people in space will mean. What we like to call the, uh, what's coined by Frank White, the overview effect, and how uh, seeing this view of, of Earth from above changes your concept of life on Earth. And you know, even sending hundreds of teachers in space and then commuting, uh, uh, talking to students and uh, you know, communicating this vision, how that potentially can change our world. And so Cosmos Review is one of the cultural elements of, of how space, new space especially, is going to change our world in the 21st century. True saying, Space for the People is a recent video the foundation produced uh, in support of So I'm going to play that now because I think uh, the space leaders you will see talking in this short seven minute clip uh, can provide you with more insight about what the foundation is all about than the next Give me a second. We've already passed the carrying capacity of one planet. We have only a limited number of resources and a limited amount of space on this world. We need the resources of other planets to be able to live well. I really think the humanity in the future will be around the solar system. We will be living in multiple communities, on multiple surfaces, in free space, um, becoming different species as we evolve to the environment we live in.
you can see a future where entrepreneurial companies are going out and doing things that nobody's ever done before. There, we've got people diving from space, we've got uh, private space stations, we've got, uh, we've got NASA going out to new worlds, uh, moon, Mars, beyond, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, stuff that nobody's ever thought before uh, was possible. So I worry about the survival of mankind. And um, so I think we've got to be planning and thinking forward. I don't want to live in the last days of a declining once great society. I want to live in the first days of the next great human adventure. It's not a world of finite shrinking resources and finite shrinking horizons and everybody dominated by squabbling over the scraps left to us by our ancestors. It has to be a world where we believe in the possibility that we can go out and do something new, where there is more out there if we just put the hard work in to get it. That's what a frontier is about, and space is a frontier that can occupy humanity for thousands of years to come. And I am very excited that we are at the threshold where we can choose to make that happen. This country was built on innovation. Entrepreneurs came and made things happen. And they took action because they wanted to make different lives for, for themselves. And that's what America is built on. You look at big companies, Ford Motor Company, Boeing. They, these were formed by individuals who had an idea and a vision, and they implemented it. And they also worked within new markets or created new markets. So the commercial role uh, and the role of private sector and of small businesses really is the engine of America. So we need that investment to show that that is important. The government plays a role as well, but the, the, the real role of government is to fund the things that are too expensive, too high risk, too high return. The places where industry is afraid to invest or can't afford to invest. It's very sad to me that, that so many uh, free marketeers and believers in limited government have um, objected to, the, to what the administration is doing out of blind partisanship or because they think that um, the administration is wrong in other areas, they must be wrong in this one. And, and from my perspective, this is the one area in which they're the most right. Um, and by that I mean that they are committing NASA to buying commercial services. And there's really nothing better the government could do than to become a good and reliable customer. So I think it's very sad if we, if we continue to focus on space as a program, meaning NASA, and really not even NASA, but the old ways that NASA's been doing things, instead of thinking about space as a, as a place that's so full of potential. NASA needed to be thinking forward, you know, very far forward. These are the things that the public would pay for, but maybe the free market wouldn't pay for. These are the taxpayers going to do science with their, with their taxes, and that's okay. We will do that. We, we want to go to Mars. We want to see what's on Mars. We'd love to see an astronaut pick those rocks up and tell us what they're looking at. I mean, those are the kind of things that inspire us. Those are the things NASA should do. We should support the president's new program uh, for space because it frees NASA up to do what NASA was supposed to do at its core, uh, which is do things that are too risky for the commercial sector to do. And uh, the commercial sector can actually support that. Um, and everybody can work together and do things together that they can't do by themselves. President Obama's vision for what to do with NASA and, and even the entire federal space initiative by the other policy they came out with is the first time that someone's actually proposed something that listens to the experts, includes the commercial component, but actually sets a goal that is beyond Earth orbit that is achievable. The goal is to be able to go anywhere and stay. That means you have a sustainable program as opposed to something that we have right now where you end up having a very large project, cannot fit within its budget, it fails, you re-examine and you come up with the next big port project to be able to keep jobs in place. If your goal is to explore space, this proposal from the president is probably the best one that has ever come out. Um, because it's multi-destinational, it's, it's fiscally responsible and it's sustainable and it embraces the best that America has to offer, which is our entrepreneurial spirit. 
I think that the president's new policy on space, uh, even if it was not clearly explained at first, is very important because we have been stuck in a mindset for 30 or 40 years that government is the only way to go to space. And I think that has caused us untold amounts of uh, delay in economic development. You sort of have to try different things and make mistakes in order to learn and get a, a working system in whatever field of life. <clears throat> By allowing lots of companies to go out with a business idea and try to develop something, you will get that experimentation that's needed to find the one that works. Um, the way NASA has been doing stuff for the last 30 years is they start building one system and then it gets too expensive and they cancel it. And they do this a few times and maybe build a system, but it's sort of a very sequential process instead of a parallel process. So it's inefficient and it slows down the point at which people could be employed by private industry and allow NASA to focus on the things that are too far out and too expensive for business to be interested in. But if the businesses can provide those services and provide them to not just NASA but to private individuals, why should they not be allowed to uh, do that without competing against uh, you know, federal dollars? There's been a history of government providing some kind of limited support at the beginnings of any new form of, of commercial transportation system, all the way back from when we built the first roads and canals in this country, up through the railroads and into the early days of aviation, giving those industries a kickstart and then letting them grow and develop is something we've traditionally done in this country. Um, so I like the proposals in the, in the new budget and I hope they act on them and let's get, let's get that while we can because we may not get another chance. As Robert Heinlein used to say, yield to temptation and may never come your way again. which I consider a national security issue, 
uh, is, is put at great risk. Now, uh, the only place where Obama thought it was prudent to cut back on spending uh, has been on defense and on space. But we, we obviously now have a much more difficult fiscal situation. Uh, clearly, we're going to have to uh, prioritize spending. And I would tell you that space is one of the areas that we need to look at very carefully. I don't think we, need to, we want to rely on Russia for our manned space program. Yeah, America needs to be cutting edge, definitely, in that area. So you're saying it's not, when we say cut spending, cut other things. You're saying space is a necessity. I think space is a necessity. I think it's a vital, uh, vital necessity. We're going to obviously make sure that it's done efficiently and effectively. Uh, however, I think relying on Russia for our uh, for our manned space program is, is frankly very dangerous. And uh, again, the untold story is that the president and the Pelosi Congress have now brought us to a situation since we are on the verge of bankruptcy, uh, where even very important things are going to have to be looked at uh, very carefully. All right, now, Baron, how does NASA spend our money? How much, on average, does it cost to send one of these rockets into space? Well, it's it's a few billion dollars. I mean, in total, NASA's uh, share of the U.S. budget is about half a percent. It's about 19 billion dollars a year. So the question that I, I want to ask is not how much we're spending on NASA, but what we're getting out of it. For the last 22 years, our message at the Space Frontier Foundation has been that space is a place, not a program, and that NASA really is not the only in town. If the government's going to spend money on space, it should be doing it to catalyze the private sector to actually make America a truly space governed civilization. So this idea that space is a national security issue, it, it means something in the long term in the sense that ultimately we want this country to be a leading space bearing civilization. But in, in the short term, quite frankly, it doesn't matter whether we're sending astronauts up into orbit. What matters is, is NASA going to build a commercial sector that can make our presence in space sustainable? And in that respect, I have to say, although I don't very much like anything the Obama administration has done, I think they're generally not much interested in the free markets. This is the one issue where this administration has been more free market, more entrepreneurial, more promoting of the private sector by getting NASA to buy rides from commercial space operators right. than, than they have been in any other area. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us. We have one more space shuttle to send up in this mission, and that's space shuttle Atlantis, and I understand that has not been paid for yet, so we'll have to keep an eye on this and see if Congress approves that. Thanks so much, gentlemen. Have a great day. Thank you. President Obama. So now you're up to date. Very exciting time. It's a very exciting time to be involved in the space field. Uh, as a student, we can look out the next 10 years and see a number of space companies uh, starting to, to see a profit, uh, see exit strategies. Hey, I mean, I don't know if any of you sort of went shop with talk the other day, but she said that she was going to let SpaceX may go public, have an IPO. And in uh, 2012, maybe that's our next day moment. Maybe that will be the point where... I don't think that's me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that will be the point where many, many of these small companies like Maston will be able to go to Wall Street and get $100 million. And that's at least from my perspective, right? Whether it's in 2012 or 2022, I think that's happening. And as a young person, that's where I want to myself to have a career. So um, I, with that, I'm going to open up the questions.
It's been your work and that of the foundation that has advanced our nation and our world toward a time when humans living and working beyond Earth is a reality. I know that we're doing that now with the astronauts on the International Space Station, but I also know that what you are working toward is a time when not all of the people living and working in space are paid for by the taxpayer. This award is meaningful because it comes from the space community's true believers. You are the visionary change agents, and I grew up with you. It's a somewhat ironic uh, situation that when the Space Frontier Foundation was founded, I was executive director of the National Space Society, and it was partly uh, in response to NSS's close relationships with NASA and industry that the founders felt a void that should be filled and started the foundation. At least, I remember that's the way Rick explained it to me at the time. Rick and I discussed at that time how NSS could be the Sierra Club of the space movement, and the Space Frontier Foundation could be Greenpeace. I'm sure we were both thinking that we would take their membership numbers any day. So maybe this is like Greenpeace giving an award to the deputy of EPA. Uh, but if so, I'll take it. We may not always agree on tactics. I'm not sure what your equivalent is to the raft stopping the whaling ships, and I'm not sure I want to know. But the result has been the same. We have a broad recognition of the importance of meaningful space development. The world has changed since that time 20 years ago, when many of us were focused on direct mail and membership numbers. The Foundation has done an incredible job of evolving with the times and taking advantage of that change to shift the debate, and I would even argue the culture of space development. I know, I know you are furry mammals. Uh, for over two decades, the Space Frontier Foundation has championed the vision of Gerard O'Neill and others uh, for permanent human settlements in space. You have led the fight for policies and programs that will open the space frontier for commerce, science, and people everywhere. So as a government employee responsible for providing only a small piece of that vision, I'm proud to be considered among your distinguished group of foundationers. I'm doing what I can to align the NASA programs to allow for this ultimate vision. We know that the government's role is to invest in R&D to advance the time when the private sector can play a greater role in space activities. We know that it is our job to press the exploration envelope to, as you say, the far frontier, allowing the private sector to take advantage of our past investment and open new markets. We know that it is our job to help buy down not only the technical risk, but the market risk. And we know that sometimes it is our job to simply get out of the way and not compete with the private sector. So that as a nation, we can tap the very innovative spirit that has led to economic growth that capitalist societies rely on. And why do we know all this? We, or I, learned it from you. I don't know who all is there, but I can only imagine how many of you have been part of this past few decades of discussion on these very topics. What is most impressive to me is that you have consistently carried this critical message of space development into so many areas, to policy, legislation, press relations, and political action. You are truly the thought leaders on this topic and have never wavered from your goals. As you know, I live in Washington, D.C., and that is, in fact, impressive. I know you are aware of this, but what started out 20 years ago as crazy talk is now accepted national policy and is the very underpinnings of the President's 2011 budget request for NASA. President Obama said in April, our goal is the capacity for people to work and learn and operate and live safely beyond the Earth for extended periods of time, ultimately in ways that are more sustainable and even indefinite. You can be as proud of those words as I am. The President's budget proposal at its core supports opening the space frontier and pursuing the ultimate goal of human settlement. He has given us a wonderful, visionary blueprint and the resources to go with it to achieve this objective. In the coming decades, a strong space industry transporting crew and cargo to and from lower orbit 
with many new jobs and industries is going to help drive our economy and provide more access to space worldwide. You've been advocating this for more than a decade, and at NASA, we're doing everything in our power to make it a reality. We're closer to some of our big objectives than we have ever been. We're taking steps to develop and fly the technologies we will need to explore an amazing array of destinations and to give future generations far more capabilities than we have today. That today we are having a discussion about how to do this, not if we should at all, are thanks in large part to the efforts of your passion and tenacity. I know you will not be disheartened that there are challenges along the way and that progress is not as fast as we would like. I do wish that I could be with you in person this weekend. I promise that I have been putting in the hours over the last year, but as many of you know, Dave and I got married on Space Day, July 20th, that was 24 years ago this week, and we're on vacation without the kids, who by the way are 15 and 18, shocking, I know, to many of you who remember uh, before and when they were born. But this award will help me get through the tough times when things are not going as fast as I would like to. To remember that I work for citizens like you will appreciate our efforts. So together, we will open the space frontier and thank you again for this honor. So that was Lori Garber, and I'm over at NASA, and we just will play that video during our new space dollar awards. Is the June again? Now the, the Gala Awards, um, they, they're, they're actually our, it's our black tie unit um, every year. At the, uh, I, I would like to, I would like to consider it on the Academy Awards of Space. Um, it's kind of where everybody kind of gets together and assesses, if you will, uh, the state of the new space industry as a whole, because we give awards out to the movers and shakers of that year. Um, for instance, this past year we gave it to Lori, we, we gave one to NASA Space Systems for the Millennium Challenge and all the great stuff that they've done in our field and our field for a scale of all and all, all the stuff that he's done and all the others. So I want to be all of them. I'd also like to point out that uh, our conference chair, Ryan McClinko, is now sitting over there. Ryan, stay there for a second. So if you are interested in getting involved, as I said, you can go up to James, you can go to Brian. Uh, there are a number of other foundationers in the crowd. My Lynn. So. Well, thank you very much for your time. As I said, Facebook me and tweet me. Stay in contact. Do you have any questions? Oh, Ben Corbin.